Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. and this is Real True Street Crime. And I just wanted to give you all a little nightcap tonight. Something so y'all can go to sleep on and a few things to think about. Albuquerque, New Mexico was a spot my father used to smuggle from for years. Might have been one of the places he had Pep and Tracy go through it too along the way. And the reason he would have you go to Albuquerque, New Mexico, is because he was pulling the Mexicans out of Mexico and you didn't have to go into Mexico. They were coming to New Mexico, which was into America. Now, Jazzu City was in Mexico. You had to actually go into Mexico when he had you go there. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Then they switched down on the other side because that's near the Texas, El Paso. Then Tijuana is back out towards California. So he was working the whole border, both coasts, down there in the south in Texas and out there in Tijuana and California. And this is what made the fat man rich. He always said, dope don't cost nothing in Mexico. It's absolutely worth nothing. They have fields of the shit that they will burn. Dope ain't worth nothing till it comes to America. That's when it becomes worth all the money. It ain't worth shit in Lebanon, Afghanistan, all these places. It ain't worth nothing till you get it across the border in America. Now it's worth a fortune. Because as I said before, America consumed more drugs than any other country in the world, world, legal or illegal. We need a pill if we need our dick to get out. If we got a headache, we need a pill. Any pain in our side or back, we need a pill. So we are the most medicated, legal or illegal. And to make it so bad, just to let you all know, Coca-Cola at one time had real cocaine in it. So now you run around drinking Coca-Cola, you drinking cocaine. You really hyped up. And the government had to take it out of the recipe. But for years, cocaine was in Coca-Cola. Where you think the name come from? Coca-Cola. Understand that. Remember that. That's a true fact. Cocaine was really in Coca-Cola. Now let me go back to what I was talking about. Now, when you're smuggling outside the country, the price is super cheap. And the thing that really made my father great is that he knew a lot of people. He knew everybody. Understand that he knew everybody all across the country. And here's another thing my fat man say he used to do on Ryan Gibb Valley them. And Black Bush them might have not been with him at this time. Or they may have and just didn't want to tell you or talk about it. My father said when he get a lot of packages out of Tijuana or out of El Paso, Texas, he would buy a house on the road coming in. And he would hook up in that house and he would distribute from that house. He would never come into Michigan. That's why... When Pep and Tracy pulled into that driveway and the police at four o'clock in the morning came down on these white folks' house, man, it would have been a sight for you all to see. Pep and Tracy was on their way back from Mexico and they pulled in the driveway. They got lost and they came up on the exit and they pulled in the house of a driveway and the police thought that was the meetup spot and that's where they was going. Man, they came with helicopters big lights, everything. And they took Pep and Tracy into custody then and brought them back to Detroit and searched them and came up with a big goose head. Understand that. After they did, they smashed on Tracy and Pep. They brought them back to the federal building, the FBI building, which is different from the federal building. The FBI building is right across from it. They brought Pep and Tracy in there, searched them, shook them down, he came up with a goose egg. But the indictment they still bought, which was a useless person, uh, indictment that was really a fraud. The whole indictment was based on a fraud. It was all on excerpts, tapes, which was conversations Pops was talking about, shit that he had been did years, had already went to jail for. So they used excerpts, tapes, then they used Pep and Tracy, which didn't ever get caught with no dope. Never got caught with no dope. Understand that. 
How can you conspire to get some dope you never got is my question. How do you conspire to get some dope you never got? Honestly, because Pep and Tracy never got caught with a shred of dope, ever. And that's what I'm trying to tell you how the government can set your ass up and lock your ass in and they don't have even have a case for more for you going to plead guilty and cop out and they don't even have a case. They ain't even got a case. They count on, they can scare your ass so much, you'll plead guilty to anything. By the time they get through wishing you and uh, promising you 20 and 30, I promise you, you're going to get 20 years. I promise you, you're going to get 30 years. You will be so old when you walk out of here, you might not be able to walk out of here. And niggas fold immediately. If it's a case, they could have been. That's how the government play. They make it where cases you can beat by the time being so high, a nigga will cop out. So let me go back to the story. When you're out on the road smuggling, my father used to buy a house on the road and he would stop there, he'd take the whole package, hook the whole package up, then he'd call Black Butch and them niggas out there to take it back to Detroit or wherever state he wanted to be distributed in, Chicago, Kansas City, the whole Midwest. And them Cadillacs, let me tell you something Ryan Gear Valley said about them hundred Cadillacs. He said, you know what? Them motherfuckers never stopped rolling. Them motherfuckers was rolling 24 hours. So they was watching them and there was always another one going to do something. And they was always in Cadillacs and shit. So he was like, God damn, these motherfuckers in these Cadillacs don't never sleep. So he's constantly watching the motherfucking show that's constantly rolling, look perpetuously, like a Rolex watch. Never stop. Ain't got to wind it up. Throw black butch some of them dibs and you just wound them up. Understand that. And my father always said, the black dispatch, man, that was one of his favorite motherfucking homeboys. Understand this, the black dispatch. Understand that, never to be forgotten, never to be duplicated or replaced. The black dispatch, invaluable. And understand that, the black man, the fat man always said, the black dispatch was my right hand man. And the black dispatch said out of his own mouth, Courtney didn't hang with me and Eddie. Courtney didn't hang with me and Eddie. Cause Black Butch and the fat man would be all over the road, all over the world. And let me tell y'all one more thing before I wind up in me about Ryan Gear Valley. Now, Black Butch and my father would be over there in Nigeria, Africa, or Colombia somewhere. True story. Ryan Gear Valley would be sitting in front of our house in Southfield. Pops wouldn't come home for six months at a time and they would still be sitting at our house in Southfield. That's where he would lead them motherfuckers. And my father also said this, and y'all remember this. He said they had a team of over 50 agents on him. And the only way they could ever keep up with him is that they put him on parole or on paper. He said because if he didn't have to report at home or anywhere, he wouldn't. So at the time, the only way they used to catch up to my father after he got out of jail, when they couldn't find him and he didn't get him to slip, they would send the parole officer out to the house and tell my mother to have a fat man come down to his office immediately. It was an emergency. See, that's how they put a tail on you. Once you got that 30-year tail on you, now they can watch you a little easier because they can send a parole officer out to your house at any time. Anytime he can call out there and say, hey, I didn't see Mr. Jackson tell him to come down and see me. Now what you going to say? He out of town? Oops! Because he ain't supposed to leave the Eastern District of Michigan. Understand, when you're on paper, man, you're not supposed to leave the Eastern District of Michigan. You ain't supposed to have no association with none of the criminals that you was in the conspiracy with. Anybody that you was tied up in that conspiracy with, you ain't supposed to have no motherfucking touch with them once you get out of jail. So it's a lot of rules and regular, 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 it's a lot of rules and regulations to that shit. Understand that. And now, when the feds get a tail on you, that was the worst day of my father's life. He said, Eddie, baby, 
When I didn't have a tail on me, man, I'd be in Columbia some motherfucker where and Ryan Giovanni would be sitting out there in front of my house waiting on me to come home, and it'd be six months before Pops come home. They would get Ryan Giovanni, I told y'all, they would have that man running around chasing his goddamn tail, and he'd be just thinking Pops up there a part of Nicky Bonds' our organization. Boy, that's some Costa Nostra shit, because he'd never see that shit. That's really some Costa Nostra shit. You think he's a part of Nicky Bond's crew. And by the way, happy Black History Month. Stop over there at Crime Town, Kingpin's Kids on Spotify, and check us out. Subscribe, share, and like, and there's plenty more of this story to come. And I want you all to know one more thing before I step out of here. Subscribe, share, like, and thanks. Milton Henry. Cornelius Pitts, Donald Goins, Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, The Dramatics. All of these are a part of the stories, and I'll be writing stories about. Marvin Gaye used to live right over there, about a four foot mile off of How to Drive in Living Noise. Right there. Right there on the Avenue of Fashion, not far from there. Pops used to go over there and holler at him all the time. Understand this. So I'm trying to tell you this is a world-class story, plenty of celebrities in it, the whole city of Detroit. As I told you, you got Milton Henry, the same lawyer that drove Malcolm X to the hospital after they poisoned him in Africa. And Milton Henry is the same lawyer. If you listen to that Hucklebuck and Motown Mafia, Milton Henry would run all over the goddamn country anytime Pops call him. Milton Henry will be there. And the same thing I'm trying to tell y'all. That interview at the house, Milton Henry was there. Look at it. Milton Henry is saying, Milton Henry coined the statement before Johnny Cochran did. They're trying to try the case in the media. Look at when Milton Henry said that. Then look at when Johnny Cochran said it. Milton Henry said it before Johnny Cochran said it. They're trying to try the case in the media. Look at over there on Big Boss Film. Give a shout out to my man over there at Big Boss Film, Courtney Brown Jr. We got to shout him out. Simmons Law, check her out. She'll help you out. But let me finish saying this. Pop said the worst day of his life is when they had a tail on him because they could pull him and pull him in there at any time they want. If they didn't have a tail on him, Ryan Gill Valley will, sit, will be sitting at our house in Southfield and ask Black Butch where would they be. Ask Black Butch where the fuck would they be. And y'all talking about Ryan Give Out. Man, Ryan Give Out didn't know. Listen to that Jop. Jop is another one. Jop tell you all out of his own. Man, that ain't that. Man, they ain't no half, not even a tenth of the shit. Jop even tell y'all that out of his mouth. Lieutenant Jop tell, man, I should have been indicted. That's what Jap said. Nigga, the way I was banging, nigga, I was tearing the walls down and I didn't get indicted. So I know the fat man must have had. Ryan Gear Valley chasing his motherfucking tail. Because like I'm telling y'all, the pops grab a motherfucking big ass package, man. He sit by a brand new house on the road. Cash money. He hook up, call Bush and them and them Cadillacs. Then get down here, you pick it up, take it here, you take it there. Bush just said out of his own mouth, and I'm finna go. Before the dope would be sold before he even bought it. Half the time before pops even cop. The dope would be so long, goddamn ready. So he'd have to sit there, send one shipment back after hooking it up on the road, go back, cop again, buy another house. Man, my father, when he died, let me tell y'all something, when my father went to jail, that man easily had as many goddamn houses and apartment buildings and shit as he had Cadillacs. I guarantee you that. Because the tax bill, when he went to jail, they were sending motherfucking all kind of pay the taxes out here and, and, and motherfucking here, pay the taxes in Kansas City on this, pay the motherfucking taxes in Fort Wayne, pay the taxes in Saginaw. Man, my mother was getting motherfucking tax bills. She went, where, where, where's all this shit? These is properties that my father was buying on the road, just hooking up in them one time. Man, that man was making so much money. What the fuck was it for him to buy a ten or $20,000 house and he making millions off of that package. He used to buy that house one time and never go back to it again. Never. That was his rule. 
just like using cell phone. He only gonna use a pay phone one time. One time. And that's what he said about those houses. Eddie, I buy a house just to hook up in it one time. Or I buy a house exclusively for a stash house. When he buys a stash house, understand this when you got a stash house. Nothing goes there. But whoever live there, if it's an old lady living there, don't shit go there but her. And if she is capable, you have her bring you the package somewhere else. You don't go to that house either. Understand that if you know how to run an organization, and this is something else Ryan Gibb Valley said, and I'm going to go and drop the mic because I'm talking too long. Ryan Gibb Valley said, Eddie Jackson's organization was the best ran organization he ever even tried to crack. He said it was the best ran organization, the best racketeer he had ever run into. He said this motherfucker had this shit down to a science, man. This motherfucker was a criminal genius, man. Subscribe, share, like, and thanks. And by all means, check us out over there on America Real Street Crime. Look right down below and you can find us. Subscribe, share, and thank. And these stories, that book reading, finna start coming. You got Milton Henry. I mean, he is a key figure. And I'm going to say this and I'm gone. My father didn't use every goddamn lawyer in the city of Detroit, damn near. Monash need more pads. Monash need more cash. Cop out cold pepper. Understand, my father used to name all the motherfuckers. Monash need more cash and cop out cold pepper. So subscribe, share, and like. And he said at the time, he was getting money and coming up at this time. Steve Fishman was down at the courthouse cutting his teeth. He was taking court cases, like with the case that I think he was telling you about with uh, my man, Frank. But anyway, my father said in his day, Steve Fishman was down there taking court cases. He know who he was, and when Demetrius told him who he was, he said, you talking about Fishman down there who was taking court cases at the, county, at the city county building? He remembered when court was way back at the city county building which is they just switched it all up now, but many years ago. And he remembered uh, Steve Fishman. He said, Fishman was down there taking them uh, court cases at the time, and he was cutting his teeth. Understand that. So the fat man even remembers Steve Fishman. And as I say, cop out cold pepper. So subscribe, share, and like, and the stories are coming, baby. They finna get the rushing out of me like a faucet. And the fat man say, Judge Fikens told him when he was on his way home, Mr. Jackson, would you please not turn that goddamn faucet on because you flood the motherfucking streets every time you turn that goddamn faucet on that you seem to have. Mr. Jackson, could you please not flood the streets? Subscribe, share, and thank. And that's from Judge Fikens, Chief Judge, down there at the federal building. Mr. Jackson, could you please not flood the streets? Damn, would you let it be dry for a while, Mr. Jackson? 